So hey everybody, welcome to Relentless Talk Radio. I am here with um, Kristen Mer Merrifield. Is that how I'm saying it right? Yeah, you got it. And uh, isn't it funny when you meet somebody, you're like, um, I've seen your name, but I actually haven't said it till I'm live on, on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the CEO of the Alliance of Arizona uh, Nonprofits. Right. And you and I met um, through Deborah Bateman. You did. Bateman, right? Yeah. So this is actually number 19, episode number 19 of Relentless Talk Radio. Isn't that crazy? It's it crazy. In November, and all of a sudden I have 19 episodes. Wow. So um, you and I today are going to talk, talk about this thing that we're, this crazy idea that I have that you've, agree, you've agreed to come on my crazy train with me, right? <laughs> yeah. So last year, I was the first year that I did the Art of Fearless Giving Back. And what I did in that series was I highlighted WebPT and six charities that, um, that WebPT supports. And that mm -hmm. opening was in, um, oh my gosh, it was in November. I'm trying to think now. Seems like yeah, a long time ago. It seems like a long time ago, but it was it was last year about this time frame actually. It was uh -huh. in May. It was in May at the Arizona Science Center. And so this year what I'm doing is I'm focusing on one charity and thirteen um, donors that support that charity. And so you and I met actually at a charity event. We met at the Fresh Start um, charity event. We were both sitting yeah. at Deborah Bateman's table. That was and awesome. you told me what I did and I went, hmm. Hi, <laughs> universe. <laughs> Coffee, right? Uh -huh. So what I want to do this year is I'm going to be focusing on one charity and 13 donors. And so just to give people who are listening for the first time some background, what I do with with this um, this project is I'm a visual journalist, and what I do is I tell a story and I illustrate it. And the stories that most interest me are the stories of entrepreneurism and philanthropy. So I'm telling the story of the mission of one really cool charity and 13 donors who are going to be business people or corporations, one or the other, and or both, um, and their amazing mission and story and why they choose to support that particular charity. Mm -hmm. So when I met you, one of the lessons that I learned last year when I did the project was that I really wanted to make sure that I pre-prepared folks for the project. And also, I wanted to be sure that I really chose a charity that was completely able to participate. Mm -hmm. So last year, one of the things I've learned is if you're working with just purely volunteer organizations, they haven't got the bandwidth to do a project like this. Uh -huh. So I thought, gosh, I really want to highlight some charities on Relentless Talk Radio and then let my community vote on who I focus on. And so I wanted to create a little bit of scarcity and competition. A little tricky, right? It's a little, <laughs> a little, a little bit, but, but this way, I knew that the charity that was involved was fully able to participate and really hungry to participate. But I also knew that we had a community that was willing to back it. Mm -hmm. So when I met you, I thought, huh. <laughs> the wheels there, are turning. There might be some interesting synergy here. So you and I met for coffee. And what we're doing this year is we're going to be working together to choose 13 charities that we're going to vote on, right? Right. right. So the first one next week is the Homeless Engagement Lift Partnership with Don Marie Rapopo and her husband Michael founded this organization many years ago and they serve the homeless community. So we're starting there, but you're going to help me choose the other 12. I'm yeah. super excited. So tell everybody about your organization and what you do specifically in your organization and what your organization does for nonprofits here in Arizona. Sure. And Rockstar. So um, the Alliance of Arizona Nonprofits, nonprofits was founded in 2004. And, and it was a unifying voice for the nonprofit sector in Arizona. And that is what we do to this day, is we know that there's a lot of nonprofit organizations doing incredible work, but how do we really unify together to make a bigger impact and to provide more resources and support for our community? So the Alliance has been doing that since 2004. We do a lot in advocacy and public policy on behalf of the sector. Right now we have a bill in the legislature to help with charitable giving. So those are some of the things we, yes, very important. And then uh, we provide training and education and resources to the nonprofits. We believe our mission is helping nonprofits fulfill their mission. Um, our mission officially is to unite, strengthen, and advance the nonprofit sector. And what I really loved most about this opportunity to partner with you is personally, I see my role as a leader that is working to unify the sectors not just within the nonprofit sector, but the for-profit as well. And how do we bridge that gap? So I love hearing you talk about entrepreneurism and the nonprofit sector, because a lot of times they see themselves as separate 
you know, working in their own lanes. And it's like, there's so much intersection, especially in a community like Phoenix and Arizona as a whole. So many of us have been on the for-profit, now we're on the nonprofit, then philanthropy. And so there's this beautiful tapestry of people that are working really on the same goal, right? To make Arizona a great place to live, work, and play. So I actually double majored in college in psychology and art, and then oh, I went wow. to in business, right? So what you're talking about, you're speaking to the choir. Right. <laughs> in college, I, I worked as a social worker for uh, the Salvation Army Women's Shelter in New York City. It was the last stop before health shelter. It was like when you were really down in your luck, you ended up in the shelter. Mm -hmm. And then I ran a program for people with AIDS in the Bronx after that. And, you know, in my mind, um, the relationship between business and being non for profit it's directly related. Because if you yeah. don't run a good business, you're not a good nonprofit. Yeah, you because can't stay in the mission. People, if you don't run your nonprofit like it's a business. Yeah, you have to have more money coming in than going out, right? There's some principles that apply to both. And while there are differences, you know, there's different reasons that you create a nonprofit. But at the end of the day, if it's not sustainable, you can't serve the people you need to serve. That's right. Yeah. And I also think that um, I'm just taking a look at our time here just to make sure we don't run behind. <laughs> I'm, also, I'm also thinking that... Um, you know, people think that when you're a nonprofit, you're not supposed to make money. Right. Don't let me get on my soapbox. What's crazy is my electric bill and, I don't know, GoDaddy's electric bill and Gabriel's Angel's electric bill is the same dang price, right? Right. You might get a little gimme here or there from the government because you're a nonprofit, you know, right. a little, little break here or there. But for the most part, if you don't earn the revenue, you can't turn the lights on. Correct. Yeah. And... And also for philanthropy, I mean, would a donor want to donate to an organization that is using dollars just to barely make it and make payroll or to have an organization that's sustainable, that has a reserve, that is paying their bills, that has great employees? We need to think about ourselves as investments, too. And let's talk about the great employee thing, right? Yeah. So if you want to hire a great employee, you don't want to hire someone willing to work for $8 or $11 or a not livable wage, right? You want to, you want to hire somebody who values themselves enough and also who's got a life, right? So if you have a life, you need a livable wage. Yeah, we don't wanna we don't wanna reciprocate the cycles, right? Which draw people to a nonprofit. We wanna be leaders bringing people out. Exactly, one of the things that used to strike me as, you know, white girl from Vermont, <laughs> working <laughs> in, in, a, in a shelter that was mostly people of color, uh -huh. no prejudice in there, just fact, okay? My girlfriend, Kristen, was from Cape Cod, I was from Vermont. We were the night social workers. She was a night manager. I was a night social worker. So it was me and her and about 500 people of color. Mm -hmm. And we used to always say, it's hard to pick out the security guard and the resident. Who's which? Because literally, the security guard and the resident were like one stop away from each other. Literally one paycheck. Mm -hmm. And see, the, and there's no judgment attached there either, okay? The Salvation Army did the best they could to do what needed to be done, right? But I think that nonprofits have to be able to make enough money to be able to hire quality people. And it's not to say people that are making eleven dollars an hour are not quality people. So I want to be careful about how I'm raising this. Right. What I'm saying is, is that if you want to be able to, if you're a corporation and you want to be able to hire a CEO worth his or her salt, then you need to be able to pay a competitive salary with right. what that CEO would be earning at Google. Correct. Yeah. I mean, because who do you want solving issues that are facing the community that are very dire? I mean, when you, and complex, right? This domestic violence, food, shelter, security, all those things, you want the best minds. And we know that, you know, people have to make a living. They have to support their families. They have to be able to be compensated fairly. And I think that's the, the perfect word is competitive and fair, right? Because they're running organizations that are very similar to for-profit same amount of responsibility, maybe even more emotional, right, responsibility. So yeah, we believe that at the Alliance that we should be attracting and retaining the best talent and we have to have a fundraising strategy to help us do that. So my personal goal yearly is $100,000 that I'm gifting to charity. That's awesome. My personal goal. But my goal for this project is over and above what I'm personally capable of giving. My goal for this project is to write a million dollar check. Yeah, let's do so it. So I will be looking for 13 donors that are going to be willing to match my my gift, then some. And I want to write a um, huge flipping check 
to some really cool charity that my community here on Relentless Talk Radio, our community on Relentless Talk Radio chose. So well, you and I are going to be working behind the, behind the scenes this yeah. week. We're sending out an email. Maybe you'll send this email to some of the chair, this, this uh, Facebook video to some, some of the charities. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And we're going to be sending an email to them saying, hey, here's the criteria. Yep. Are you in? Yeah. Right? And so then hopefully we'll, you'll have a team on your side where you'll narrow down the 12 people. And then we'll be announcing. We might be able to announce them all at once or we might be announcing them. I don't know. We might create suspense and announce, announce them weekly. <laughs> but so, you know, Kristen, I'm really super excited that you and I got to sit beside each other. Across yeah, me too. At, at uh, Fresh Start, another amazing organization. Oh, I think, yeah. oh you never know. Um, <laughs> and uh, I look forward to working for it. You know, working forward. There's a good. There's a good. Yeah, hey, I like it. We termed right. a new phrase. I like it. I really look forward to working forward with you. That's a great. Thing. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> and, you know, let's let's have a in, in the opening for this event. After all the all the art, the the interviews and the blogs and the paintings have been created, the opening for this event will be on the first Friday in December. We don't know where yet because we don't know what the charity is. So it might be at the charity's location, or it could be at some lucky gallery here in Roosevelt Art District. Or it could be at some other crazy place we haven't jumped up yet. We don't know. We're just going to document the process, right? That'd be fun. All right. Well, Kristen, thanks a lot. I look forward to talking to you soon. And, and we're going to sign out. The next person we're bringing on is uh, Trisha Wilkins um, from Isogenics. She's my, my business lead. And Isogenics is our nutritious partner. You're an Isogenics person too, right? Congratulations. You look fantastic. You look amazing. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to hearing what Trisha has to say. And we'll talk more about all that stuff later. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Bye. Have a rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.